Hey, hey, Blue Table fans. Today we're going to be talking about the Warp Fire Thrower from the Skaven Army Book for Games Workshop's Warhammer Fantasy line. Uh, the Skaven are a uh, degenerate and mutated race of rat men who uh, dream of world domination, and they are an absolutely just a fun army to play with uh, many, many characterful models. Now, uh, the uh, Skaven Warpfire Thrower, which is what we're going to talk about today, this is purchased as an upgrade companion unit to a unit of clan rats, or I do believe they can be bought for a unit of storm vermin as well. In fact, let me just, let me just check that really quick. Uh, hold on, I'm almost there. Okay, I don't know why that is, oh, there it is. Yep. Yeah, for Storm Vermin as well. Uh, the Warpfire Thrower costs 70 points, so it is, uh, it is a pretty notable investment. And uh, it only has Toughness 3 and 1 Wound. So uh, it can uh, blow up pretty, pretty quickly. It has almost no defenses. So basically, um, you would purchase a unit of Clan Rats. Uh, let me just get these guys together. And um, it, uh, it deploys alongside of them to begin with, but then can, then can move off. But we're not going to talk about weapon teams uh, in general, but we're going to do uh, specifically uh, warp fire throwers. So anyway, uh, here's how they work. Um, it says that it's a move or fire weapon. Uh, however, it can pivot on the spot. So you can do your movement phase and uh, your warp fire thrower um, can uh, basically turn to face whichever direction it pleases. Uh, now that's important because um, according to this, you uh, have to aim it to any target in line of sight. Now if you read the line of sight rules, it has to be in the front arc, which is, about, which is a 90 degree angle like this. Um, but you also have to be able to trace line of sight from the eye of the figure to any part of the body, that's head, torso, arms, or legs, of, uh, of the target. Um, so in this case, I've conveniently located a unit of Lothurn Sea Guard there as a possible victim. Uh, so uh, even if during the movement phase you had turned these guys around, um, doesn't matter. As part of the shooting, you can turn them to face uh, whichever direction you want, pivot them. Um, again, they can't move and fire, so uh, here's how you do it. You um, turn them to face their opponent, or wherever you want to shoot it, and you place the template in front of them like that. Now, technically, you could, you could have them turn, it doesn't have to be straight, it could be like that. Uh, now, this could matter if, for example, you thought they were going to be charged uh, next turn. Um, but uh, in this case, we'll just go like this. And then uh, what you do is you roll an artillery dice and uh, you move the template that many inches. So uh, in this case, uh, I rolled a four. So I would move the, uh, the flame template here four inches. So you could do it from this end as well. So whoops. So that would end up like that. And uh, I would look at it from above and I would see that I had hit uh, six guys that way. So let's talk about how close you want to get to things. Um, now, you do get some loss of control with move or fire, meaning um, if you don't move, then you're kind of depending on wherever your enemy's going to be. But the question is, how, what, how close is the ideal distance from a, uh, from a target unit? Um, so you got to consider it can go uh, two inches, four inches, six inches, or uh, eight inches, or it can even go 10 inches and completely overshoot uh, its target, uh, or maybe hit its target. In this case, 10 would be like that. So my point is, um, this thing is eight inches long. So basically, you have to consider, if you roll a two, this is going to be the minimum that it goes. And the maximum that it goes is going to be eight inch, basically another length farther than that. So it's very likely, once you're in kind of this sweet spot of about 12 inches away, uh, it's very likely that you're going to, you're going to hit the target unit. Now, 
if you look at it like this, if you're within eight inches of the target unit, then you're almost guaranteed to hit, because even if you roll a 10, um, whoops, eight inches away, I can do this. Even if you roll a 10, you'll still hit the back rankers with the very tail end of this and at least get something. So to my mind, the ideal distance away for this to be from a target is between eight and 10 inches. So basically, uh, you would roll, in this case we rolled a four, so we move it four inches and we hit our six guys. And uh, here's where the warp fire thrower can be absolutely devastating. It uh, hits with strength five and does D3 wounds. So to a unit like say of ogres, uh, that can be absolutely devastating. Plus, uh, even one wound causes a panic test. Now, if you roll a misfire, then of course there's a misfire chart. Uh, which can result in a, the team being destroyed. Um, they can... Hold on. Immediately roll 2d6 in the scatter dice to determine the direction the team runs before exploding. Hold on. Oh, place the large round template over the Warfire team and resolve hits as normal. There it is. So basically, on a result of one or two, you just drop this template right on top and they explode. So you can hit your own guys. So it's wise to keep them at least three inches away from friendly units in that case. Um, or they go 2d6 inches in a random direction. So in this case, they go seven inches this way. And then they would explode. And, uh, and then on the sixth one, if you roll a six, uh, it simply cannot fire that turn, which is, whew, you lucked out with that one. Okay, so uh, that's your Skaven uh, warp fire throwers. Quite frankly, if you look at a board and you assume that you start 24 inches from the foe, uh, basically you can have these as static, uh, like a static piece that can just spray warp fire over the battlefield. And, but you have to think about, well, what is their threat range? Well, the average roll out of 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, uh, the average roll is going to be about, uh, I'm going to just, it's going to be about 6 inches. So your threat range, if you consider the length of the template, is about 14 inches. So you're going to end up with something like that. So uh, really, you have to, if you pos position them strategically, you can uh, probably get some pretty devastating effects. Now, personally, I don't take them because I think they're pretty hit or miss. And by the time the battle that gets, cl gets that close, um, it's, um, you know, a lot of things could have happened between now and then. Uh, however, um, like all Skaven stuff, it can be absolutely devastating uh, once it gets off. And you have to... You have to play the odds. Uh, one last note, I would like to point that these particular uh, warp fire throwers, these come in the Isle of Blood kit, which is an extremely good bargain from Games Workshop. And uh, you actually get a warp fire thrower and a plague wind mortar uh, like that in, uh, in the kit. Uh, and um, they're, they're both really good. I personally prefer these and plan on doing another video with those. Um, also, a quick fun conversion to do is to uh, take the little, um, take the uh, warp fire smoke from the smokestack and glue it into the front here, and uh, it gives you just, uh, just a little bit of variation on your guys. All right, well, that is uh, care and feeding of your Skaven warp fire thrower. I hope you have uh, enjoyed and got your inspiration for the day.